Hey guys, David here from Google 55 Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a desktop environment in Arch Linux. Okay, so let's get started. So the goal of this video is to show you how to install a desktop environment on your Arch Linux system so that you can have a graphical user interface in order to facilitate certain tasks and make the system practical for everyday use. In this video, I'm going to be installing the KDE Plasma 5 desktop environment. However, the steps are relatively the same for all other desktop environments as well. I will be giving alternative instructions for the most popular ones on the screen throughout the video as I install KDE on my system. So here I have a brand new Arch Linux installation, and you can see that I'm currently logged in as root. However, most desktop environments will not allow you to log in with the root user, and as a general security practice, it is best not to log in directly with the root user if you can avoid it. This is why I will briefly show you how to create an additional user on your system so you can use that user for everyday computer use. You can skip ahead in this video if you've already done this. So I'm going to be adding a new user with the username David. In order to do this, you want to type in user add space dash m space dash g space users space dash s space slash bin slash bash space and then the username so david hit enter and that just created the username david so the user add command allows us to add a new unix user with the last word in the command being the actual username in this case the username is david the dash m flag tells the system to create the user's home directory as slash home slash david the dash G user string tells the system to add the user to the regular users group. And finally, the dash S space slash bin slash bash string tells the system to use the bash shell as the user's default shell. You don't really need to worry too much about understanding the last command. This is just typical practice. So once you've gone ahead and added the user, you want to create a password for that user. So type in P-A-S-S-W-D space and then the username. So David in my case, and I'll just enter in a password for the user. And there you go, you've just added a password to the user that you just created. So although this user will allow us to log in and perform regular tasks, it would be nice to be able to perform the tasks that need root permission while logged in as this user via the sudo command. So although this user will allow us to log in and perform regular tasks, it would be nice to be able to perform tasks that need root permission while logged in as this user via the sudo command. In order to make this user eligible to use the sudo command, we must add it to the sudoers file. In order to do this, run the command vi sudo and hit enter. And in this file here, you want to scroll down to where it says root. So right here. And once you're there, just hit insert on your keyboard so you can type. Type in the username that you just created. So David space all equals and in brackets all space all. This allows the user David to execute all pseudo commands. Press escape on your keyboard and type colon WQ to write and quit. And there you go, you've just successfully added David to the list of valid sudoers. Okay, so let's go about actually installing the desktop environment. So the first step to installing a desktop environment on any system is to have a working display server and appropriate display driver. Think of the display server as the link between the software and your hardware. It allows the computer to actually display the images it wants to by configuring your graphics card to display them on your monitor. The most popular display server for Linux is Xorg, and this is what we are going to be using. To install it on our system, we'll be using the Pac-Man installer. Make sure that you have a network connection before doing any of this. Anyways, to install the Xorg display manager, type pacman space dash capital S space xorg dash server space xorg dash server dash utils space xorg dash x i n i t. The first package is the actual display server itself, and the last two packages are additional packages that can be useful in managing the display system. So once you've got that typed in, just hit enter. And if you get any messages for dependencies, just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave them all at default. So once it asks if you want to proceed with the installation, just type in Y and hit enter. And this part may take a while depending on the speed of your computer and your connection, but I'll come back when it's done. One thing that I will mention before this finishes is that you might get a lot of errors saying that it was unable to retrieve certain files. This is normal because it's just searching different arch mirrors for the file, and it will eventually find it on one mirror. Okay, so now that that's installed, we should go ahead and install a graphics driver. The display server is useless without a graphics driver, and again, we'll be using the Pac-Man installer to do this. So go ahead and type in Pac-Man, 
space dash capital S space, and then the name of your graphics driver. I have a list on the screen with the name of the open source graphics card driver packages with their corresponding graphics card manufacturers. You'll want to choose and install the one that pertains to your system. If you're not sure which package to install, you can install the Visa driver. This driver is the very basic graphics driver that allows basic graphics functionality for all graphics cards. Although I do not recommend staying with this driver because it does not allow certain acceleration types on certain cards, it can be helpful in the meantime because it will at least allow you to run the desktop environment while you figure out which driver you actually need. Because I'm doing this in VirtualBox and the system does not have direct access to my graphics card, this is the driver I'm going to be using. So for the package I'm going to install, I'll type in xf86-video dash visa, and I'm going to hit enter. I'll type in Y for yes, and it went ahead and installed the Visa driver. All this being said, even if you are installing the proper driver for your graphics card, I recommend installing the Visa driver as well so Xorg can fall back to that driver if it fails to properly load the chip specific driver that you're installing. You can install both driver packages in the same command here if you like. Okay, so once the driver is installed, we're going to go ahead and install a display manager. The display manager is essentially your login screen. It first starts the Xorg display server automatically, so it doesn't need to be started from command line every single time, and then provides you with a list of installed desktop environments and users so that you can log into the system using a graphical user interface. Just like there are many desktop environments available, there are also many display managers available too. So most desktop environments have a recommended display manager to go along with them. For example, for the KDE desktop environment that I'm installing, the recommended display manager is SDDM, which I'll be installing here. I will leave a list of recommended display managers with some of the most common desktop environments on the screen, and you can install the one that corresponds to the main desktop environment that you're going to be using. In theory, any display manager should work with any desktop environment, however it is easiest to install the one that corresponds to your desktop environment if you don't want to go around making changes to configuration files. To install SDDM, I'm going to type in pacman, space dash capital S, space, SDDM, and I'm going to hit enter. I'll type in Y for yes. And again, this might take a while, so I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so finally to install the actual desktop environment, we're going to need to install the group that contains the packages we need for the desktop environment itself. Think of a group in Arch Linux as a main package that contains several other smaller packages that are needed for the desktop environment to work. The group that contains the KDE 5 desktop environment is called Plasma, so I'm going to type in pacman space dash capital S space Plasma to install it. Again, I'll leave a list of common groups for different desktop environments on the screen. Now by default, this only installs the minimal desktop environment and not many applications to go along with it, which isn't very helpful. Most desktop environments have another group with a bundle of applications that you can install alongside the desktop environment to get the essentials that you need to get it up and running, such as a file manager, a terminal, and a media player. For the KDE Plasma desktop, this group is called KDE-Applications, so I'm just going to install this as well by adding kde dash applications to the end of my pacman command here. This package name can vary a lot depending on the desktop environment that you're installing, so I suggest that you check out the official Arch documentation for the name of the applications package for the desktop environment that you're installing. Again, I'll leave a list of common ones on the screen for you to reference. Once you've gone ahead and typed all that in, just hit enter. And again, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave this at default, so I'm going to hit enter. Same thing, enter, enter, enter. Type Y for yes, hit enter, and this here will probably take the longest of all the commands because it's downloading so many files, so just be patient. Okay, so that did take quite a while because of all the mirror errors that I was getting, but it is finally done. So the last thing that we need to do is enable the display manager to start automatically upon boot. Now in order to do this, all you need to do is type in system ctl space enable space and then the name of your display manager, so in my case that's sddm and I'm going to hit enter. Now you shouldn't get any errors and this will enable the display manager for startup automatically on boot. If you do get an error however, the service might not just be the name of your display manager and you should check the Arch documentation about your display manager for the name of the service that you have to enable. Okay, so now that all that is done, we can go ahead and reboot and we should be greeted with the login screen if all was done correctly. Okay, so now that this system has rebooted, you can see here that we are greeted with the login screen, and I can go ahead and type in the password that I made for the user David. 
And there you go, you can see that we have successfully installed the KDE Plasma desktop environment, along with the suite of applications to go along with it. So thanks for watching and I hope I helped. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button down below. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more, and also don't forget to check out my Facebook and Twitter page. Don't forget to check out my website at www.googoo55techtutorials.ca. All the links are in the description below.